Ya yeah, hello. If you actively watch this video, you will have absolute clarity on early start, early finish, late start, late finish, float, buffer, critical path, and near, near critical path, and negative float. So let us consider a very simple project which has just two activities. It is activity A is here, 12 days duration, and activity B is here, that is 5 days duration. Within this 12 days duration of activity A, 10 days is the actual time required for it, and 2 days is buffer. Buffer means things can go wrong. So they are putting uh, two days extra. In case if something goes wrong, they can consume that two days as well. So buffer is always for contingency management. So actual time required is 10, two days is buffer. Put together, the activity duration is 12 days. And there is another activity, parallel activity, which is activity B, which, is a, which has a five days duration including the buffer and I have not shown it explicitly here assumption is this includes buffer as well now if I start activity A on day 1 it will get over on day 12 at the same time if I start activity B on day 1 it will get over on the 5th day I can complete it on the 5th day Activity A, if I start on day 2nd, it will get over on the 13th day. That means the project will slip. Whereas in Activity B, even if I start it on day 8, I can complete it on the 12th day. And this activity is going parallelly till the 12th day. So even if I start it on day 8, the project will not slip. Then I say early start for activity A is 1, early finish is 12, late start is 1 and late finish is also uh, late finish is 12. So float is late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. So here it is 1 minus 1 or 12 minus 12. So float for activity A is 0. But for activity B, float is equal to late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. So it is 8 minus 1 or 12 minus 5. That is 7. So activity B can float around for 7 days without affecting the end date of the project whereas activity A is you no know, tight jacketed it doesn't have a float it cannot float around so activities with zero float are on the critical path and if I connect all those activities whose float is equal to zero then that is the critical path so in this project we have only two paths start a end and start B end. So the longest path is start A end and the float of the longest path is always zero whereas the, the shorter paths has a float which is greater than zero. So by this time you should be clear about early start, early finish, late start, late finish buffer and float. Float is equal to late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. Activities on the critical path will have zero float. Uh, yeah, and that is the longest path. Now the next question is, 
what is negative float so when i search the net you will get lot of uh, very confusing and complex statements for negative float uh, at some point in time yeah i could really understand it but then till then it was difficult because while searching the internet we get lot of complex and funny definitions for it uh, which i could not comprehend so luckily at some point in time i understood it and based on that i prepared this slide now take this activity b the actual start i could start activity b only on the ninth day so if i had started it on day 8th also no problem because i have seven days float but actually i could start only on the ninth day in this case float is late start minus early start in this case it will become late start minus actual start so it become 8 minus 9 that is minus 1 and if i start it on ninth day the duration of this activity is 5 days i will be able to complete it only on the 13th day which is beyond the late finish so again if float is late early uh, late finish minus early finish so 12 minus 13 that also will give us minus 1 so for an any activity whose actual start is delayed beyond the late start or the actual finish got delayed beyond the late finish will have negative float now another question is uh, can a project have multiple critical paths so in this case now i have added one more activity c here which is also 12 days duration and activity a is also 12 days duration activity b is 5 days duration now if you really work out the float for activity a and activity c float is equal to 0 so both are critical path so a start a and is critical path start c and end is also critical path because both have zero float now let us say this activity c the duration is only 11 days so in that case uh, the float will become just one day so technically activity c will not be on the critical path but at the same time because the float is very less it is very close to critical path it is a near critical path item so that also must be tracked very closely otherwise one day slippage any slippage beyond one day will have an impact on the end date of the project then leads and lags now let us say there is an activity a here activity construction here and activity inspection is there when the construction is almost 80% completed i will start inspection then i say there is a lead between construction and inspection so lead means always some amount of parallelism uh when the when the testing starts testing is 30% completed maybe i can start defect fixing that is a lead when the design is 80 percent is completed maybe i can start construction then there is a lead lag means waiting time that means after pouring concrete i should wait for 8 days then only i can start the next activity that is lag lag is just waiting time a lag always stretches the schedule elongates the schedule whereas the lead always compresses the schedule yeah so to summarize uh, we discussed about late start early start late finish early finish then we discussed uh, we said uh, float is late start minus early start and we discussed about negative float as well we discussed about buffer we said buffer is provided within an activity uh, to 
to counter contingencies. Uh, so if an activity actually it is it will take only eight days okay I'll put nine days actually if it is going to cost me only a uh, hundred dollars uh, maybe I'll put hundred and ten dollars because things can go wrong so that is buffer critical path we discussed all the activities on the critical path will have zero float and that is the longest path in the network sometimes projects can have multiple critical paths and we also discussed about near critical paths. Then we discussed about leads and lags. Lead means parallelism, which compresses the schedule, whereas lag is waiting time that stretches the schedule. So watch this video peacefully. And if you have any queries, post it as a comment. And if you have not subscribed to PMRI Campus channel on YouTube yet, please do so, so that you will not miss out uh, any updates. Because these days, every day, uh, on an average, uh, at least one video I am uploading. So if you subscribe to this, you will not miss out any of the updates. Please share your feedback as comments. And uh, please rate this video also, uh, that will help us to improve and that will motivate us also to do better. So if you like it, please like it. If you have suggestions for improvement, give the suggestions for improvement. And if you did not get any value out of this video, please dislike it, share that information as well so that we can work on it. Thank you very much.